hello and welcome to today's webinar where um of course we're looking at the deals clinic following on from um the webinar this week with my myself and my brother and to, to help me run through the the deals clinic i have of course got my my colleague um andrew green here hi andrew how are you doing uh very good paul thank you very good very good um so today is really all about um about helping you with your um, your deals to understand kind of what we can use Nimbus for to kind of help you with all of that. And Andrew's going to be helping me with that. So Andrew um, was, was 10 years land director at Taylor Wimpy. So knows a thing or two about appraising a deal and, and working out whether it's tax and finding a bit of land as well, I suspect as well. So um, so really that's what we wanted to, to cover off today. Um, the What I would like to do is just stop sharing my screen for a minute. And what I'd like to do is that anyone who's got a particular area they'd like us to, to look at and to particularly search for, um, perhaps you could um, look at the bottom of your, your Zoom control panel and there's a raise hand button on that. So if you could just raise your hand, um, we'll try and bring you up to the front here and we'll, um, we'll answer those questions for you um, there and then. So we'll just give you a moment just to, to find that, um, that, particular, um, that particular thing. So Paul wants to ask a question. Let's just invite um, Paul up. Can you hear us okay, Paul? I'm just asking you to unmute your, there we go. Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've, I've got a plot of, of land which I've found. I don't know if you can, if you'd be happy to have a look at that one particularly, or just certainly, a... yeah. Um, Andrew, do you want to drive? Do you want to bring up Nimbus and, um, yeah, yeah, and share your screen, and then we can. There's sort of two things we can do, Paul. One, if you've got a title number, we can put that in. That will kind of find out if you've got a um, an address or a location. We can um, we can search for that as well. It is um, Mill Street. No, Mill Street, Ottery St Mary. I'm just looking to see if I can find a title for it. Mill Street, what would be the, the location? Yeah, Ottery St. Mary. Ottery. O-T-T. Uh, yeah, at the top there. There we go. So I can quite honestly say I've never been to Ottery St. Mary. I have no idea where we are at the moment. So, Andrew, do you want to kind of just zoom out, show us whereabouts in the country we are? Um, it's just outside Exeter. Ah, brilliant. brilliant. Right. Fabulous. There's a straight airport. So, um, Andrew, first off, can we just sort of see residential values, kind of just understand sort of good areas, bad areas, sort of see where we are at the moment? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So just using the overlays, generally we're looking at these market ones now. So we're going to be looking at the average pound per square foot. So obviously St. Mary's coming out just under £300 a square foot. Actually, pretty good values, which is all great. If you wanted to know sort of rental yields, quite low rental yields there. So clearly there's better maybe a bit of growth going on in this part of the town, or part of the world. We're also deprived area index there as well. So we can get a bit of a feel. Just we'll do a bit further on that because they're kind of that's usually quite granular, isn't it, in terms of um, yeah, so kind of north, um, northern part of that's pretty pretty good, isn't it? Um, middle bit is probably what six, something like that. So it's um, you want us both of them, you know, it's clearly a, a you know a nice place, but you know, in terms of the village itself, it seems to be more to the sort of northeast, which are the sort of preferable areas out of out of the whole village. Yeah, cool, fabulous. So let's have a look at the particular site then. So what's the which site is it, Paul? It is. I'm, I'm just trying to find the. <clears throat> it's called Frennicum Park. But well, in fact, we could just pop that into the um, into the search if it's um, Fennicum Park, couldn't we? Fennicum, Fennicum or Fennicum? Fennicum, F-E-N-I-T-O-N. I-T-O-N. Here we go, Broad Street, or St. Mary, there you go. So it's a sort of a Google powered search, that top bit. So it's kind of going to show us um, uh, you can kind of type anything you like into that, really. So that's going to show us sort of where it's where it says it is. So that's what Google thinks is that sort of middle piece in the middle there. Is that is that the right place? It's a, it's a piece in the middle. There is a another property on the high street which it sits behind. Um, here we go. Application for planning permission. Hang on. Here we go. I've got a number on this now. Um, 16 slash 1987 slash M4. So that's your M4, but... And the, the, would a postcode help? Yeah, go for it, yep. EX, Echo X-ray 11. 
one yep. alpha alpha. I think it's probably going to be one of, unless it's maybe one of these little pieces here. No, this looks. This looks like we're in a different location completely here. Mm. Just, hang on, where's that? This is Columpton. No, it's a different place. Yeah, I think that, that postcode just gives us it's the wrong one, actually. So I'm not sure that's. Um... EX11, one AA. Alpha, alpha, yeah. Now that's what's on the. Um... The planning document. Mm. That might be where the applicant is based, potentially. It says it says site address details at this. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just see if we can just see. There was a few bits in and around. It, its title is the Old Mance, M A N S E, Mill Street, Ottery St Mary is the address. I think we might be talking to. I mean, would you recognise it if we, if we see yeah, it? There's a, there's a huge, yeah, ab absolutely. I'm just looking on. Um, it's on the main street. That that looks like it actually. Look, red there's red ferns it could be behind red ferns. Land, land adjoining Seven Mill Street, charcoal grill. So it's to the left. It's the left of the screen as you look at it. Ah, this piece here. That's nine. Which is land adjoining Seven Mill Street. Yeah, they're both, and they're both owned by Fenton Partners. So I think it's, like, it's both of those. Um, it's look, it looks like the bit to the left of that, behind that huge building there, at where you are now. That's it. I was going to right. <laughs> But the first, the first thing I thought of, if it was this piece here, is you know I don't know where on earth you're going to get your access from. Given it's the same landowner, you might be able to do a deal. But clearly, if it's this piece, then you have got an access. It is that piece. The bits that are for sale are that huge, great building on the front, and the plot at the back there, which has planning permission for uh, several houses. Yeah, there you go. Got the um... Andrew. If you if you pop on the planning overlay, you'll see. Um... It's a mixed use, so it's change use in the ground floor. Okay. So that blue spot on the top is the one that we're we're looking at. So it's got change use ground floor from the old manse from A2 to A1, A2, A3, A4. Conversion floors to one maze net and construction of additional story and conversion to two flats and then um, seven new townhouses at the back as well. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Well, let's kind of have a little play with this. What, what, have you got a kind of particular, a particular kind of question around that particular building? Would you want to just have a have a play around and have a look at some stuff so that's got, the, got a... the, the easy bit for me was if you if you were going to look at that because there is a pro, there, there, I've got a prize for it would be for just some kind of insight for me about how I might get the best out of obviously Nimbus to be able to help me in that decision making process. I guess. Of course, yeah, yeah, totally. Well, let's have a look at a few things there. So what's kind of going through my head? Um, so there's your access point across. Okay, there's some. Um, some levels issues, isn't there, to worry about down there? There's, um... There, at the back there, I've, I've had a look at this. Um, now, that goes downhill. Now, behind the, the old man, a big building on the front, and coming up, is, is it's on a, uh, a relatively steep incline. Mm. Not, not ridiculously okay. steep, but it, it is a significant incline from, from the back of the house there, where your little man is. Yep. It's uh, that's it. That's the building there. So my, my kind of my immediate worry with that. So um, what you can kind of see so the way I knew that that was the case. That there's kind of there's there's levels issues. You can kind of see it on the damp damp roof course and see it on the bricks. Yeah. You can see how they sort of step down and sort of so you can see this kind of levels issue at the back. So my kind of my first concern is I'll be having a chat to my my. Um, have they got a topo survey for it? Can they? Have you got kind of levels issues around that they can kind of they can show you on that? Um, have I got one? No. So that would kind of my, my first question would be around um, obviously making sure in terms of my build costs that I've got my levels kind of dealt with. I don't know yeah. what kind of retaining structure I'm putting in. And um, Andrew, can you jump onto the planning application itself? And let's just kind of get, look at the plans for that and just understand um, what those look like. Um, sort of where, because if it's kind of towards the back of the site, then sort of I don't know quite how how crazy those that sort of that levels issue is, but that's my kind of 
my immediate sort of worry over it is the is the levels. Um, yeah. Just think we can get onto sort of the three D view on Bing, which I think we can actually, which is slightly um, slightly annoying. But but that sort of um, there we go. Yes, yeah, so they have got some retaining. They've got kind of steps, haven't they? At the um, sort of through the middle of the, the scheme. So you have got some retaining walls to go in there, I suspect. Um, I should be kind of conscious of my with my engineer about that and and kind of where the um, what are those red lines that run through? Andrew, are those are those um, services or something? Yeah, it probably looks like the your um, your foul and your and your mains drainage or something, which they'll all connect into into here. Well, I wondered that, but is that it's not service media crossing it because they've they've designed the scheme around it, so it's not kind of a, a way leave that's in there or something like that. They need to need to worry about as part of it. Um, well, bear in mind, I mean, you've got approved plans, and you know, I'd like to think whoever's instructed over these, mm. a little bit of faith in that this is acceptable, but obviously you need to review that, and there'll be a report, yeah. the services report, which then picks up on that. But to be honest, a lot of it is all here. So all these, all this in this reporting section, which if we can go report, apply, then you're going to find all your various, well, there are all your committee reports. I've not used um, whatever it is, East Devon District Council's uh, planning application before, but you know, I suppose you've got a construction master plan there, which might be quite there must be a top and level survey on there as part of that, I'm sure. Must be. Um, yeah, there's your elevations. Your floor plans might be new. You haven't done the levels probably yet. Um, design and access statement. There must be. Yeah, I would. Um, yeah, first thing I to be honest is like you say, you, you need to have an engineer to run over it and get an understanding as to how you're going to build it and what's the what the cost is. Yeah. To do that, because I think with your levels, absolutely. I mean, that looks like a retaining wall through there. To give you reasonable levels on your gardens, um, you know, even look at these little sort of spot levels through here, you can see there's over a meter difference between there. So then there's a meter wall running through there at least, reducing down. Another one, almost a meter along through there as well, probably. Yeah, nine. It's not, I think it's not a it's not a cheap build, is it? I don't think in terms of those those levels. Can you you know unit ten is is then siding onto that that sort of the steps that are going down. Sort of through yeah. the site, and and as are seven and four, seven and six, kind of that that sort of walk between the two. So you've got sort of, and there's a, sort of a fair amount of work work going into the ground on this. Um, the second thing goes to my head, then Andrew. Sort of two things go to my head. So one, um, we've got a set of comps to look to worry about. So what the what are the what are the true sales values across sort of around this site? I think yeah, as honest, you know, in terms of where you can use Nimbus the fullest, I think in terms of trying to understand the real technical details and the ground and all of that, you know, ultimately. The planning applications are going to lead you to that. You know, we, sure. we, there isn't some overlay that's going to tell you exactly, you know, what what these foundations are going to cost and all of that kind of stuff. But where we can then obviously excel is looking at make sure you get your values right. And arguably that's going to make the biggest difference. You know, if you're all the same engineers, some will be more conservative than others, but you're talking about you know a difference of five pound a square foot, whereas actually you know, on the revenues, you could be talking 20, 30 pounds a square foot, whether you get it right or wrong. Yeah. So then that's where if we look at the, the values in this particular area, we know roughly the, the 290, but we want to then get a feel for for what um, houses are selling for. So let's just take, we don't need the planning layer on for now. So now we want to go to the sales comparables. We're looking for residential comparables. So let's toggle off all these commercial ones. And then depending on how far back you want to go to. So, you know, this is going to go back um, what's that? Two years as a default, which is, seems yeah. quite reasonable. So we'll apply that, and then ultimately, what this is doing is then saying finding all the residential properties that have sold in those past two years, and we can start picking those out and saying, right, bear in mind the townhouses. So these sort of little townhousey things are probably quite um, a good indicator of of what they're going to sell for. So back in 2019, 220,000, 236 pound a square foot, not particularly high. Um, bear in mind they're going to have quite sort of small gardens so even things like this might be quite comparable as well again even lower 157 pound a square foot mm. so clearly i don't know whether it's a, a you know you want to export that to excel and kind of get the mm. sort of a, an overview for that so 
So what you can then do with this is, is export all of those that are within 200 meters of that, of that particular loca location to Excel and sort of get that sort of general theme of, of, what's, mm -hmm. um, of what sort of the, the general sales values are. The other one I'll do as well is then just looking, this looks to be the, you know, the most recent new building around here. That's, um, it's uh, over 65s or over 55s accommodation, that one. Uh, okay. Uh, right. Do you want to just pull the um, the price paid export up, Andrew? Just have a look, look and see what that, that looks like. Um, yeah, that's just loading up. But um, yeah, so I think this is why it's really important to be, um, you know, you can't just assume £300 a square foot. Sorry, my Excel seems to be rolling really slowly. Here we go. Um, you've got to do the work to find out what things are actually selling for. Exactly. Um, which should we look here in in sort of day order when you look at you know those most recent ones? Yeah, there's a, there's the odd one that is maybe getting sort of three hundred pound a square foot. So then I'd probably be then having a, a quick look at um, number eight, Windrush Rise, um, and just get a bit of a feel for what that's like. And if that is looking fairly new right, and there, isn't it? Wide, then um then that would be a good comparable it's got a garage that's fairly so so really isn't it um but that is really close and it's really recent it's, it's close and recent but none of these have garages yeah but then you can you know you can factor that in you know yeah. you know we would always assume you know between five and ten thousand for a garage depending okay. On the area, um, you know, but then that is yeah, two hundred ninety-six pound a square foot. The one thing I'd be doing is then pulling off the house types, how big are each of those house types, and then trying to find obviously comparables that are most closely relating to that. So that you know, sure. if you are eight fifty, then you want to be looking a bit more like this, and maybe it's going to be more two two five. And I think with eight plots. You know, typically I, I, I tend to think in pound per square foot because I'm looking at, or in the past I've been looking at 200, 300 unit schemes. But if you look at eight houses, you'd be pricing these houses all individually. And so it'd be worth to sort of, when you get that plan, is to almost literally be writing on a price on each and every one of these. Yeah. But because obviously, you know, maybe this one that is a bit concerned about being overlooked of this one is going to be five grand less than, than this particular one, which is going to be a bit higher up. You know, maybe it has views across the valley. I don't know, you know, what, what the, the view is like from the site. These it's are all... Cross, it's a cross rooftop over the main street and there's raised buildings behind. So you're looking into um, the oh, fences of the, the buildings that are behind you. But yeah, but that's the, that's the kind of thing I'll be thinking about is trying to then have a look, you know, and then for each one of these, they all look, the fact that they're all you five, six, seven, eight, whatever, you suggest they all look pretty much the same design, um, just repeated. Um, so in that case, all it is is just then just pricing each plot. So you're just trying to find comparables for one, effectively one house type. Well, there yeah. you go. They all look the same. But they're all exactly the same. And so I wouldn't be surprised where well, you can see they look the same. And then maybe these are just offset slightly. Um, well, the thing that also goes through my head, Andrew, is, is who is Paul Humphrey's architects? Um, and is there a, you know, kind of what, what other schemes have they been doing? Um, so that's the, the architect that's prepared these plans and submit the planning application. Um, kind of is this their kind of bread and butter stuff? Is it, um, is it you know, 10 unit schemes they're, they're off all the time? So think about using the planning export on the, um, mm. doing Paul Humphrey's as the, as, the, um, as the person for that and just seeing what that looks like as well. Seeing yeah. whether he's sort of generally a, you know, whether he's an extensions kind of person or whether it's the um, uh, he's doing doing more on that sort of stuff. Yeah. The um, well, let me just have a quick look. Should we do a quick search for that? Is yeah, she's with Paul Humphreys on the um, on the. So what we've done. So on the on the bottom right corner there on the on the, the plan, it tells you who the architect was and. Um, on the, the planning export there, which I'm just bringing up now, there's the agent and applicant name. So kind of one of the things going through my head is, 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 is Paul Humphreys, you know, what is, what is it his firm does? Is it, yeah. um, is he an out and out resi developer or is he building sheds on the edge of the settlement for whatever? 
right. um, yeah. and so kind of how 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 good are those plans and, and how much do you know that that particular and it could you know, yeah, yeah. active in East Devon as well is kind of the, the, the question because it's um is that um something that he's particularly good at in effect so these look quite recent aren't they yeah, yeah. Mm. Now, those those were built by the, the same owner of this plot right okay so there you go they were back in 2019 so why is he selling it paul well i believe that he may have cash flow problems okay um, i right think on. he's over committed himself to a number of projects mm -hmm. and uh, i think he's got a, a few cash flow problems and mm -hmm. he's, he's trying to, I've, I went to see it and they wanted 300,000 for the, the old manse, which in all fairness will need complete rebuild. The roof's had it and it's, it's quite a huge building. Mm. Um, and they've got planning permission in there for two or three flats. Uh, but the land at the back there, I've, I've had a look at it and it is on a slope. And one of my concerns was it, it, it might need quite a lot of excavation and, and retaining walls put in. Um, mm -hmm. But immediately, I so I said, just remind me of the asking price. And all of a sudden, it was fifty grand less than they were looking for in the first place. Mm -hmm. I think they're open to offers, but they've also, you, they've also put together. Can you skip back onto the um, look at the owners' details, Andrew, and then just go onto the company's house link and just see um, the last accounts for for the company that owns that um, the property we're looking at. And you've got your comps on how many at the moment. So you want oh, yeah. to just get rid of those. Um, yeah. so when so Fenton Park Limited is a company that owns the, the property in effect um, they've been rebranded as MSP Capital crikey um, Sunbank Road, interesting so look uh, at the uh, filing history on that then Andrew hmm. the charges hmm Bizarre, isn't it? In fact, there's two separate facts, and there's a mistake in the thing. If you just go to go back onto Nimbus form and click on the other the other one for me. So click on that other pass and then do the same thing again. And then run the, the link to the company's house. So if no. they've, they've attached the wrong um I have got the number wrong on that. So you can see then, so just see whether there's, um, there's your accounts there to the 31st of March. You'll look at those and see whether they're, they're interesting. Um, the accounts are overdue. It's supposed to be submitted to the 31st of March. Um, it's a charge outstanding to CPF1 Limited um, and M MSP Capital Limited. That's the other company that had the, the charge on it. Yeah. They executed the charge then. So I wonder if, if they've, um, if they've had that site taken off them. It looks like it. It looks a lot like it. That's so why they've got a three and a half million pound deficit on the, on the balance sheet from mm. just over 12 months ago, haven't they? And then MSP Capital is actually, so that other company, so this is, this is bizarre, isn't it? There's something very strange going on because the, um, can I just explain that? So if you go back onto the, onto the thing there, Andrew, here. you've got, this on the, the two pieces of land that make up this site. Excuse me, I'll go back onto the onto Nimbus for a second. The two pieces of land that make up the site there both have registered owner as Fenton Park Limited. And then when Andrew clicked the first one and clicked the link into company's house, that took him to a company called MSP Capital. So my immediate reaction was that MSP Capital is the new name for Fenton Park Limited. Right. But on the other piece of land, the the number's correct. And that takes through to Fenton Park Limited onto um onto company's house. And then when you look on company's house, the accounts for Fenton Park Limited show a three and a half million pound deficit from last year. And it's interesting that when you go, in fact, if you go back onto Fenton Park, um, uh, company's house for me, Andrew, and then go to the, um, the charges section, the charges section at the top, that's it. Then what you'll see down here when you sort of scroll through them, there's a bunch of charges in place, but one of them there is then in, in, in char a charge in place for MSP Capital which is the company number that's been assigned to the other piece of land. So right. there's something very Fair. strange that they go. So that, that charge there was outstanding. I wonder if something else is happening in the background. So I think you're quite right. I think there's some major problems that go on in the background with Fenton Park, whatever, they, whatever the company's called. I think they've got major yeah. financial issues. They may well have had part of the thing taken off them. 
Um, I think some they've just, kind of it's potentially, um, like I say, they've, they've taken out finance against that particular site mm. and then therefore need to pay back MSP capital. Right. <laughs> that charge. But I mean, you know, I think that that's helpful for understanding their, I guess, need for selling. Mm. I mean, in terms of all that, you know, ultimately it'll be their solicitors who will sort out all this on their end. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I suppose then it's, it's trying to get expectations around, and the fact that if they've just developed around here, then they'll know exactly what houses are selling for, um, which for me is is just then using this as a, as a guide for those, you know? Yeah. Um, Can we jump back into um, Paul Humphreys in, in terms of the account, the, the architects as well? Because the question is, kind of are these architects, the right architects do this kind of job for you? So what what's the quality that? Should we look at this in, in more detail? And and actually what you can see here, so under column D, so this is all the planning application going back to 2015 um, with this particular company. And they've sort of got, they've got a handful of schemes that sort of 10 units and this sort of stuff, but most of it's kind of ones and twos and bits and pieces like that. And there's a couple of refusals in there. Um, something kind of interesting to see. So they've got a 15 unit scheme there. But they've got a five unit scheme, a few up has got refused again, hasn't it? Um, I don't know if you perhaps do a, a filter, Andrew, just tell me how many, of the applications they submit, they get refused on how many they get <laughs> they get consent on because it, it looks a little bit like there's quite a quite a heavy percentage of refusals in that. Yeah. Uh, let's have a quick look. Um, but I mean, you know, approved. Well, there's not many refusals to be fair. You know, you're talking 16 out of the um, 145, mm. then most approved, which is probably what you'd expect, to be fair. You know, I think you can't always get it right 100% of the time. Mm. I think that's my, I, you know, I think they seem like the kind of architect that would deal with these sort of smaller schemes, you know, like you see there's... They're doing there's, stuff, aren't they? Yeah. Everything's one, one to sort of 15 sort of number of units, you know, 10s, 12s, 5s. So it probably is their kind of thing. I think it's it's the the only difference is then obviously you'd have your architect who can draw a scheme. It's then your your structural engineer who's then going to be the one who's yeah. to, uh, to value engineer it and uh, and then work out you know how much has gone into maximizing or minimizing the number of retained walls and all of that kind of stuff. Which you know yeah. you'd be working with a um, a structural engineer to try and sort of work out you know where's best. Well, Andrew, can you do me a favour? Can you go into do a planning export for me on East Devon for residential opportunities as well? So we just sort of see what some of the plot values are around here. Um, so if we do planning export, so this is the other, other half of the planning export effect. So we know it's East Devon because that's on the information panel. Yeah. So Andrew's just going to do a, a, a residential opportunities export for us. What that then shows us is where do we see planning applications mentioning residential kind of keywords, if you like. And then it will show us kind of where those have changed hands over the course of the last sort of few years, in effect. And it will tell us what price was paid by those local developers. So we can then start to build up a picture of, well, if this is 300 grand and it's 10 units, 30 grand a plot, is that a reasonable price? Is that a bad price? Obviously, it's a pretty sloping site, and therefore we've got some abnormals going to go into this as well. Yeah, um, it's more for the it's 300 grand for that big building on the front. And it's okay. 500 for the, uh, the one on the back. The, oh, okay, so the, the, the side of the back is going to plot, right? The plot, yeah. Is there any section one six and sills that goes on, on that? Because it's ten units, isn't it? So it's a sort of strange number for, um, and it's an old, it's an old scheme. So sure, there's a um, an affordable housing contribution as part of that as well. Well, it's, it's eight units. Mm -hmm. Was it eight? I thought, it was, I thought it was ten. I think there was a yeah, but potentially there was a under PD rights. I'm assuming the conversion of the building. Uh, of course. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Got the. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. The building, I believe, um, is a relatively straightforward uh, mm. job. The other one, the section 106, just have a quick look. Obligation, blah, blah, blah. blah. Commencement of development shall not occur until legal charge referred to in recital B has been repaid in full. 
found them. Recycled B. We can see here now the most recent. I mean, there's 15, three or five in Honiton. There's an affordable housing contribution of 83,000. Mm. Thought there might be. So it's 50 grand a plot. It's more than that, isn't it? Because it's um, yeah, quite quite steamy. And we just get back. To, so we just sort of let's just build this up. And so what Andrew's done here, let's kind of just start from the start. So Andrew's done a, a residential opportunities export out of the planning export. So that gives us all these planning applications that are looking like keywords around um, around residential development in effect. What he's then yeah. done is he's then looked at um, in the middle here. So in fact, just before you unhide, before you hide that, Andrew, because we'll, we just want to kind of explain that it's then it's then been linked to the owner's details, been linked to the title that that, that property sits on, and then mm. brought through the owner's details. So what you can see at the top here, you've got a bunch of people that have bought sites, who's ordered it based on the stuff that's been bought most most recently. These are then the most recent planning applications as well as part of that. And then it's then got the price they paid for that um, for that property under column N in effect. So on the left-hand side, you've got residential planning applications, and then you've got a change of, of hands um, over the course of the last few years in effect. Yeah. So you can see, you know, Burrington Estates, you can see Skinner Developments, you can see Great Western Properties, Taylor Wimpy, Southwest Property Trading, Coverday or Homes, and this sort of stuff. So these are all the kind of local um, developers that are buying stuff and, and developing them out in effect. Yeah. And then down column D, um, there's then a bit of code that pulls out these um, mm. these number of units off the back of those schemes in effect. So you know, because there's a number of things that kind of look perhaps interesting. There's a sort of a nine unit scheme. Um, I'm going to move my picture of Andrew off the off my screen here because then we can we can sort of see yeah sort of some of these just seeing what well, kind of what prices were paid for those based on the number of units that were that were um, were quoted as part of that. So we can then start to build up. Well, what does that what does that price look like? Um, for for each of those properties that were sold, in effect. So let's just try and um, pull some this out and see what we've got. got so, so these are this is a yeah, really interesting one here. Thirteen dwelling houses within the grounds of Solston Manor, with I think with two dwellings enlargement of previously two approved apartments as well. So a bit of works to maybe the building as well. Um, they paid three or five for that. That's PCR Homes. Um, was it both of those though? Is there kind of two, there are two titles to that, aren't there? So there's well, I think it's two applications. I think one's Solston Manor is a huge building which was a hotel, mm. um, and it looks like I think we've got two applications for 13 dwellings there. Mm. Um, there's but, two different prices on that, Andrew, as well. So I think there's probably two transactions that have gone through. Um, I think only 305 each. The one yeah. above it looks interesting as well because that's 935. Um, Hammond's Limited that bought that, um, and that's nine units, so mm. nine apartments there, and they paid 900 grand, so that's 100 grand a plot, isn't it, basically? Um, that wouldn't have had a, a Section 106 um, with it either, because it was nine rather than rather than 10 that we're looking at here. And what about the ones above it? Is there anything else on there, Andrew, that we can have a look at just in terms of numbers to see sort of 100 grand a plot sort of seems sort of vaguely sensible as part of it? Yeah, well, the um, well, that's, I was just trying to hide a few columns so we could see. But what I'm trying to do is keep the address because then you can see these are interesting because they're in Ottilie St. Mary. So then we can try and oh, there some, go. Yeah, yeah. some comparables in Ottilie St. Mary versus just elsewhere mm. within um, East Devon. Uh, so if we hide these ones and we don't need their address for now. So then, you know, we can see who bought it, the address of the property, and then the number of units. So obviously, yeah, mm. the, sort of the 15, three or five. But like I say, that, you know, it's interesting to see when they bought it, when it had planning. Mm. Um, and then the rest, there isn't huge amounts. There's five plots in Exeter. So maybe, you know, slightly different location. There's 1.1 million. They're super pricey plots. But you'd think, I mean, I, I, I think we're paying well less than 100,000 a plot um, in, in Osterley. You know, if you're talking 250, 300 pounds a square foot, yeah. your bill cost is going to be somewhere in the order of 150. 
um, with with the retaining walls, if not higher. I mean, I'm trying to think. Mm. You know, with a mass developer, I'd probably be close, getting close to 150. You know, 130, 140. Yeah. And then you're looking at at best 300 pound a square foot. You want to make a profit out of that. 50 pound a square foot. Let's be generous and call them all a thousand square foot each. Eight thousand square foot. Mm. Times eight hundred pound a foot, isn't it? And you know, times fifteen. Yeah. Um, like more like three hundred quid a foot exit value. Knock off twenty five percent for um, profit and cost gives us two twenty five. Knock off one fifty bill cost gives us seventy five grand a um, seventy five pounds a foot. And then you know you then got retaining structures off the back of that as well. So you you know if there are a thousand feet each. The question is how big are those those units, isn't it? But they don't look like thousand square foot units to me. But you know, if they're three bed semis, eight fifty, then um, kind of my feel is that you probably. Well, I mean, quite... yeah. So the you know we know there's eight units. We just quickly, I'll just do this so that rather than everyone listening to me talk it out, we can see it visually as well. But you know, let's assume they are you know nine hundred square feet, and then it's um, that's how much square feet we've got. You know, if we think there is. Quid, aren't we? 300 quid a foot plus your bill cost at 150 plus your profit at um well what should we say 25 percent of 375 um so then you know land value uh is you're looking at that multiplied by that that multiplied by that and that multiplied by that, uh, which then leaves you with that minus your build minus that five hundred forty thousand. To be honest, when I minus section one hundred six of eighty. Well, I think I think yeah. I mean, I would I'd, yeah. I'm just sort of throwing that in there. But I mean, obviously, yeah. You could then you know if you mm. want to sort of split it out, you know, essentially, you know, uh, then look at abnormals. Which is section one or six figure would go in there and and you know extra cost structures, and all, yeah. all of that kind of stuff you know so maybe there's another i don't know 25 pound a square foot in there so then it's that same sort of i mean obviously i would use actual figures but we you know we're just yeah. talking very quickly because i'm conscious we might want to jump on another deal and stuff um at this rate yeah. Yeah. um as we've spent a lot of time on this one but hopefully then this gives people an idea but i mean yeah i i i think you'd be lucky to get probably even 300 i think once you actually factor in a lot of the costs um for this one i know you, you then said you've got the building so you've got the conversion of the building as well so then yeah. you know you know maybe that's adding another you know i don't know 100 grand out of looking at figure out of thin air or something you know so maybe then you would get back to sort of 350 400 000 for the whole site um yeah. and this is like i said very super super quick having a look at it but I think, yeah, you need to go through the plans, understand what the build cost is, factor in all those abnormals from all of the 106, any of the reports that said there's, you know, like other other sort of alarm bells for me, mm -hmm. looking at that plan. There was this sort of tree um, here as well, which then encroaches on these. Um, it, it's huge. On, on the foundations for here. So they're going to need reinforcing if you're allowed to, to build in there. But, you know, again, there's an arboriculturist um, report in there to have a look at that. Mm, yeah. Just go. check the condition of the um, the approval as well. Is there anything kind of in the approval that um, needs discharging? Because it may well be that it's been just a reserve matter, isn't it? So then, you know, you factor those in. Obviously, then that's how much, you know, you're willing to, to try and get away with, how competitive you want to be. You know, is this on the open market? might want to then drop down and maybe sort of 20% is a bit more, you know, um, realistic, you know, if you're being competitive on the open market and yeah. then <laughs> it all comes down to that. But, you know, if, if we said that that was actually only two seven five, then it makes quite a big difference to the, um, to the land value. So that, you know, for me, you've got to get these revenues, right? Because these, even if it was one thirty. Well, not even that, you know, it's probably, you know, if it was 160 or something, it's just not making a, such a huge difference is the same way that, you know, the revenues can. Yeah. Um, you know, so the revenue is absolutely key. Bill costs, you'll know what you can build the house for. It's then all the other stuff, you know, abnormals put all that in the ground. Yeah. I think the, the big issue for me was just to try and see how 
uh, just sat down like you've, you've sat down now and I might use Nimbus to actually uh, make life, uh, you know, at this stage a lot easier. Not, it's obviously got a lot to offer and it, it, will, it will require me to play with it quite a while. <laughs> but uh, it, it's obviously a, a useful piece of kit. Thank you. I think the thing that kind of goes to my head is that if you're, you know, they want 500 grand for it and you're coming in and saying 300 is a good offer for it, um, you can use that planning export, you can use the sales comparables. So, well, this is why I've got these numbers. You know, yeah. these are my top three comparables, 260, 270, 290. I've taken 280 as my exit value because it's fair. These are the particulars that were those, those houses. You know, clearly your client knows that you've got 240 a foot out the one around the corner. And I'm putting yeah. 280 in this in my appraisal to get mm. to get this to buy this site off you. These are other land values for other schemes. This is what the average sales price are there. This is the average sales price here. You've kind of benchmarked your land value based on um, other land comps. You've benchmarked your, your, your GDVs based off that. You've then got a report from an engineer to say, we've got to put X, X amount extra in for all these retaining structures we're building on the side of this cliff. Um, this is a good, well thought through offer. Um, and maybe even offer a bit of slice of the upside. <laughs> so I'll tell you what, I'll give you 300 grand for it now. And if I get um, lucky with, I don't know, work out something you might get lucky with, perhaps your build cost comes in under X or whatever, then I'll give you a 20% of the of the savings, something like that. Maybe there's some kind of argument there at some point to, to throw something like that in, I don't know. No, I think you're absolutely right, because the, the the agent who's selling it isn't local. He, he's based in, in Exeter rather than the local guy who sold the stuff before. Mm. Um, and they're, they're, their ideas of the done at value for these things, in my opinion, was um, overinflated. They're talking about 300 to 325 uh, grand a pop as a sale price. Um, and I, I couldn't find anything like that that sold for that kind of money uh, quite recently. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, fabulous. Let's jump on to um, another one then. Is, is that okay? Are you kind of happy with that? Um... Yeah, no, that's perfect. Thank you. It's. Uh, I, I just wanted to uh, see the guys who know how to make it work. <laughs> you, said yeah, it, you can help me through. I'll go and try one a bit later on and see if I can make it work as well. Fabulous. Brilliant. Good that, luck. Right, let's um, okay. jump on. So, Stefan, um, let's see if we can get Stefan on. She's um, asked. Hi, Stefan, can you hear us? I can, yes. Hi. Fabulous. How are you doing? I'm really good, thanks. I'm going to go, go to work shortly, so I'm just hoping to... to um, I, I'm yeah. on a much different different scale. I've just set up a not-for-profit social enterprise, uh, essentially a property developer in North Wales to do supported living. And we bought a property, so I thought we might just go either go through that one or one that we nearly bought. Because I always find that if we, if we go for stuff that you have bought, then... We never know what we're going to find. I don't want to get into ugly baby territory in case that's, <laughs> I'm sure it's not, but you never know. <laughs> I always okay. hate telling people. Um, yeah, no, that's absolutely know. fine. So, so, uh, so this is, I, I, I don't know how we're going to, I haven't got, haven't got the postcode for that one. It will be an LL12 postcard. It is on Rithin Road and it's uh, the RAFA Club, RFA Club and Princess of Wales. Rafa Club. Or, or we can do a search on uh, uh, click, if you search um, LL thirteen seven TD, I can direct you in the direction of the of the property. Let's do that. It's, it seems to be taking us straight to a house. So let's have a look. Is this in the right area? Where are we going from here? I, I'm, can we come out a bit, please? I don't think, I'll let Lima Lima 1-3. Yeah. Okay, yeah. We're, we're doing yeah. good now. Yeah, uh, Wrexham. Yeah, we're in Wrexham. Uh, we've got Morrison's in the bottom left-hand corner. That's right, yep. Yeah. Morrison Petrol, and then just on the other side of that, uh, to the uh, directly below, is another plot. So we just scroll down a little bit. Mm. Scroll up, depending on which way you want to go. Uh, so, okay. so we've got this, the, the one underneath two. Uh, underneath two? I don't quite understand what you mean by that. Green, green, red area with, with number two written on it. If you zoom out, Andrew. The left. 
to the left, left there. Too far. Uh, where these trees are? Uh, where are we now? Yeah, it is this build the building in the middle of that below the Rithin Road. The plot there. Oh, okay, know. on the right there. I see. Yeah. Do you want to take a search here, Andrew? We'll just um bring up the title, make sure we've got the right the right address on it and um understand that. Rafa Wings Club, there we go. There we go. There we go. Fabulous. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. So what have we got? Do you want to have a look at the um the various things that are on there then? So yes. um there's not any planning unless it was the ambulance depot and highway depot, no. but no, doesn't look like it's that. Um, so then there was no no planning on it unless it's this Western Gateway land. It's difficult. We are aware of planning on the site. Planning a few years ago. Here we go. So here we go. Rafa Club. Uh, uh room. So there was no, so there was no development. So then, all I'd be learning looking at, I think it's quite interesting. Yeah, actually, about the highway, you've got the um, you've got the, just click on the the title between it and the highway. Mm. Yeah, the council probably is probably okay in the tax case. Yeah, council, you know, but yeah, it is something to be aware of. But you are rebutting, yeah, it doesn't look, it doesn't look like okay that, there, aren't you? That, yeah. Um, so then to be honest, you know, appraising this, you'd be looking at 0.8 of an acre and then how much can we get on 0.8 of an acre, nice, easy access in, but it pretty much cuts out the left hand side of this site. So, you know, there's your little small bit of open, open space or something with an access through into the middle, into the no sort of roughly, um, sort of widths and things that are, I mean, I don't know what I'm getting too into, uh, the designer here but 30 meters across you know so pretty much a house with a garden 10 meters you're looking close to sort of 20 so you probably want to get that access road running just down the side of one big long line of houses that's probably what i'm thinking there um and then ultimately if we then have a look at you know so roughly going to be you know to sort of roughly here so what's that 109 you know, sort of eight metres a plot or something, something like that, you know, um, on average. So you probably get 13, 14 units in across here, maybe. If I was trying to sort of maximise the number of units off that site. You okay. to so so uh, we're, we're not making either affordable housing or, um, uh, or live-in properties as such. You know, we're, we're doing supported living bungalows uh, and or converted pubs so yeah, on that site point. we were thinking of uh maintaining the the pub as part of it which is a three-story pub uh, as as a development in, uh, as in its own right and then putting in approximately eight bungalows along the rest of that property taking the the function room away okay yeah yeah so so not too bad so yeah so still retaining this and then sort of eight bungalows in here um and so then obviously conversion costs and all of that that's all you know working with your um your builders and your surveyors and everything just to understand you know what the conversion costs are there demolition quote you know it's relatively straightforward to work out you know and speak to someone to get to get a quote for that then obviously then drawing out your scheme uh, with an architect. If you want to speak to architects in the area, find out a good architect for that. Again, we'll use that same um, feature we talked about on the last deal, where in this instance, while well, we're in Wrexham, that's, is it just Wrexham? Fantastic. That's, that's, not, that's not really an issue, issue in that that my partner's sort of built a thousand of these units in the last so you've years. Got, you know, you've got ideas of, of um you know who your architect is get a scheme drawn up nice scheme of, of eight bungalows so then in terms of you're saying supported living i suppose what drives the values on those is that more with the operator that you're looking to work with or is that uh, it, it's 
essentially around getting getting around the universal credit cap of uh, or um, housing benefit. So these are young people, uh, often often not able to work, uh, who would normally not be entitled to mm -hmm. more than about ninety pounds a week for universal credit per unit. Yeah. Uh, uh, with we then work around that with supported living, taking up to about £160 a week. And that right. then funds the accommodation. So, the, and that's what's fundamentally driving the value that you can essentially yeah. attribute to that. Yeah. Plot. The more years we can put in, with, uh, and the more complex people we can look after in those units, the more money we can generate. Okay. I mean, I've got this, it's kind of one of those things different to, to think about with this. Um, can I share my screen, Andrew, if that's okay? Let me just um, yeah, let me just steal this off if that's okay. So sort of my my approach to this was sort of saying, well, what is, what is the use of this? Um, so sort of I clicked on information panel. I presume that's you guys, is it, Stefan? Um, Stanford, Canuck, Rex, and that's the, the current owners of the, of the property, and I'm guessing. No, we're, we're, not, we're not the current owners. Okay, fair enough. This so the one got away, Paul. The one that got away, yeah. So, so they paid under sixty grand for it, just you know, eighteen months ago, or whatever. When they when they bought, that was, was kind of interesting. Yeah, it's um, on the market. It's on the market at the moment, and and they're talking about four fifty, which uh, obviously seems a little rich. Pretty punchy when they paid a third of that for it. Yeah, um, okay. What I thought was interesting, so you know, the, this is the the rate assessment for the buildings. This is the sort of the restaurant at the front. So I think you know that's sort of five thousand feet. It's a big old big old restaurant. Um, £27,000 worth of rent off it. I did wonder if there's perhaps something, sort of in my head, there's some, some other use with this that kind of looks interesting to me. Um, you've got kind of the, the club, which is only kind of seven grand worth of rent. So, you know, this is pretty low values, but, but what was kind of interesting um, in my head was that actually, when you look at the, um, the residential values in the area, you know, they're, they're very, very low. It's 150 a foot. And that's kind of really at a level that is kind of really only build cost level <laughs> there's no land or profit in in that which i guess if you're sort of social and perhaps there's a bit of rent a bit of grants or whatever that that kind of comes in off that then that probably makes that sort of a a, a sensible use for it so it's certainly not the best part of Wrexham obviously you know kind of you go out of Wrexham and you get um some better values kind of quite quickly outside the, the center of it what was kind of um just kind of going through my head was obviously you've got some Sort of traffic drivers over the roads. You've got Morrison's, you've got Aldi. Um, the thing that was kind of going through my head was: was there a sort of a, a sort of a drive-through use that might kind of be interesting or something like that? Because you've got so I put on the the traffic flow um, overlay here, which sort of shows us these things, these little kind of spots that then give us that sort of history of traffic flow. So you know, 2016 there were 15,000 cars. That's dropped to 13,000 in 2018. Um, Typically, you kind of want about 17,000 17, car movements to get sort of a, a drive through interest in it. But I kind of wonder whether you might, because you've got this over the road, whether that might, you know, whether there might be a sort of a drive through operator that might take half an acre off you. And of course, you've got you've got the space that you've got kind of 0.8 of an acre off it. So, you know, could you you've got an access or could you create a drive through and even perhaps a little bit of affordable housing at the back of it or something like that? So that was kind of making me think the other thing that was kind of interesting, obviously, with Aldi over the road and Morrison's over the road. You know, is there a little requirement? Um, I don't know where little are in the in the town, but clearly there's some sort of retail sort of option with it. Um, and I kind of wondered, you know, kind of so, so some of these are going to have some um, some reasonable values, I suspect, off the um, off that. So, you know, fourteen pound a foot Aldi is is, is kind of been been rated at. So is there a sort of some other use, um, some sort of retailer use? And that's kind of where. Um, someone like the requirement list. So that's a, a website um, run by Adam Crooks that would kind of give you, well, who else is active and is actively looking in Wrexham um, as an opera for, you know, for, for a, um, for uh, an opportunity. Um, so if we did something like this, um, are there, um, I used to be able to kind of do a free trial on this and I haven't got that set up, but in fact, um, requirement list would give us then um, a sort of a list of who's active in or who's actually looking in in Wrexham because you've got kind of you've got quite a big lump and then I, I kind of also want if you've got this sort of affordable sort of 
social kind of use, you know, whether you could perhaps try and get some land off the council as part of that, because obviously the councils are kind of quite supportive when it comes to that sort of thing. So is there a sort of a, a slightly different approach to be had where perhaps you get a bit, bit more land off there and perhaps there's some local requirement that's, that perhaps you can pull off the requirements or something like that. Is there something that you could kind of do to, to, to do something with that? It was kind of was, 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 my, was my thought. Um, okay. I sort of wonder if there's a sort of a, a commercial angle to that as well as, um, as, well as what, you've, what you've got in mind. Because I don't really okay. see that the... Yeah, uh, uh, our general pur purpose is to do, I would say, um, supported living plus mm. community pubs so you know, as essentially uh, organic growth rather rather than um trying to make a lot of money so, fair enough yeah yeah, yeah. so that's the other thing then is sort of certainly that was an interesting idea about i i, I certainly we, we are talking to the councils about bits of land and, and community centers that we can work with them on and uh, obviously at a much lower value than than that particular site was uh, is asking for yeah, and I suppose, you know, kind of this is Wrexham Council, so you could then, you know, see what else Wrexham Council own and, and then sort of export that to Excel. So you've then kind of got a, um, an understanding of, of kind of what the size of the prize is. Of course, they're, they're a fair chunk of stuff. So if that is um, your kind of goal through, through this, is that, you know, this is all the stuff that they've got and kind of all the stuff they own um, around there. Um, I don't know if there's anything kind of like Greenbelt and stuff. Um, the property we did buy, we did buy off them. Sorry, seven. I just said that the, the property that we did buy, we did buy off the council. Okay, yeah, 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 absolutely. So I, I kind of wonder if there's perhaps that's sort of more of a gateway site into perhaps sort of something else at the back here. And obviously they've got kind of a load of land. So if there was sort of a, a community use that was being lost, you know, could they, you know, use some of this, something like that? I guess that's probably the school, isn't it, over the road? But they've got plenty of land to, to kind of to put to, um, to the community uses. So is there something that you could tie in as part of that? But does feel like a lot of money given they paid 160 for it um yeah. only kind of 12 18 months ago so um yeah i think in my head you know the the sort of value isn't there in the um in the social housing maybe, maybe that does create value apologies um certainly private housing i think doesn't doesn't create value and i think um the existing use probably sort of trying to keep some of that existing use probably um probably is valuable well, uh, generally um, our model is is that we try and produce at 60 uh, 80 to 100 thousand per, per per unit and uh, mm -hmm. we, we've got enough margin in that to make it viable right mm -hmm. i just wonder if there's a um some sort of pub use as well i kind of wonder if there is like a, a marston's use or a kind of a, a green king or something like that that might want to take something like that opposite um opposite the garden so that's kind of where the requirements be kind of useful to sort of see if there is a um, if there is a, uh, a requirement for um, for uh, Wrexham as well. Okay, so I, I guess the general strategy there then is is not just to think about what you're doing, but also to think about whether whether you can use part of what you're what you're buying to actually commercialise it or or move on to somebody else or or lease yes. to to and, and use that to uh, subsidise the cost of of your, of your project. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I suppose in my head, you, you, we're trying to work out what's the what's the optimum scheme for that site, um, and then I suppose the other thing going through my head is what's the other stuff that's kind of being converted for supported living, and kind of what's the what's the usual stuff you can go and find in effects. You, know, you, you could go off and say, well, actually, where do I find um, where do I find pubs in effect? So if we kind of just get rid of all of this and then do license and leisure, um, you know, show me all the pubs across, um, you know, wherever mm -hmm. we are. Um, and sort of see what, what are those and going to approach those owners for for those for those pub sites in effect. Um, that might be kind of an interesting strategy for you. This is kind of all the license and leisure uses across the um, across the area and stuff. So kind of clearly quite a few of them as well. So maybe there is a um, sort of rather too many of those that um, that might might kind of make life interesting as well. So um, Major Mackie D's uh, more, more more coming through, I think, in the not too distant future. Yeah. We're expect, expecting a lot of pubs to be up on the market in the, in the next six months or so. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's kind of a pretty tough time I've had, isn't there, recently? So, fabulous. It's kind I'm of stuff to, that's going through my head. Yeah. 
stuff yeah. goes my head around, um, you know, searching by pub company, you could do that as well, sort of find out where all the pubs are. If, if pubs are the kind of the a sort of a target you think might work, then you, know, you can use that company search um, there sort of to look at each of the pub portfolios in effect and see which are in the right kind of target area for you and, and then which of those are in those kind of areas where the support of living might work. So you might be able to kind of do something um, clever with that or indeed using that, that sort of licensed leisure search there. The other thing that's kind of going through my head is sort of in the exports is, is doing sort of a supported living sort of search around sort of finding those keywords for the sort of similar applications going in um, across yep. Wrexham and the, and the surrounding councils, basically to see what other kind of stuff is there, see which sort of see who's doing that stuff, who the local developers are that do these things. It sounds like your client might be one of those people anyway, but it might just kind of open up a few more people as well as, as part of that. So. Okay, I'm afraid I have to go to work, but that was really, really helpful. Thank you very much indeed. Fabulous. Thank you. Fabulous. Um, I'm contrary for quite a few more, um, quite a few more questions, Andrew. But um, we're sort of running out of time a little bit here, aren't we? So, um, yeah. if you had a chance of looking in the, the Q and A for any of those questions, that um, sort of a few more sites people want no, to go and have a look at on them. More, yeah, sort of simple ones. It's, it's um, unfortunately, yeah, it's, it's moving into another site, but. Um, I'm due on another call. Um, yeah, certainly. Um, call, but um, me too. Yeah. So I think really kind of what's um, left to really to, to run through then is just to um, just finally say, um, let's just jump back into the slide. So there is a um, here in if, if, if kind of you want um, to, to to have a look at that in, in more detail. Obviously, we have. Um, you can claim a, a 14 day free trial of the, the elite platform. That's the, the platform that I've been using and Andrew's been using um, today. You can also get a one to one demonstration with the team, kind of help you understand how you can use the system yourself to, um, to really drive into the detail around the sort of the various sites you're looking at. Um, this week, there is actually a, a sale on it. So we're, we're actually five, believe it or not. So um, what that will give you is access to the elite system. Um, which gives us 12 months access to the, the elite platform what we've been using here today. Um, you get one-to-one -one support with our um, customer success team here at Nimbus. You get access to our, our webinars, kind of including these sorts of um, deals clinics, um, and access them to our three-part training series where we sort of take you through the full system from top to bottom. Um, the next session starts on the 2nd of July, um, where in effect the, the first of a, of a three-part series, what we do, we take through all the different parts of the, of the system itself. We, show you how to use those in certain scenarios and set challenges for you to go and do yourself. Across those, those first two sessions, we do that. We take through the whole system right from the very top, all the eight ways to find land and take you through the Elite Plus strategies and this kind of stuff. And then in the final session, we then have a, a session where I actually go through and, and do all the challenges that I've set um, to make sure that you really kind of have a complete understanding of how the system works. And what's great is that over the course of uh, sort of ending tomorrow, our our, the price for that usually is £1,440 plus VAT, and that's actually reduces down to £1,188 um, if, you, if, you, if you buy that by the, by, by the end of tomorrow. On top of that, there is a, um, other options you can do. So you can pay that um, by direct debit on a monthly basis if you want to, or indeed you can sign up on a flexible monthly subscription with us um, at a reduced rate too. On top of that, the Elite Plus system has um, some discounts where you can get 12 months for the price of three. So a pretty, pretty insane discounts that we're offering at the moment. So that's £450 per um, Elite strategy if anybody's interested in that. Um, I'll just give us a quick moment and just see if anybody um, would like any follow-up from the team. I know the team is pretty busy at the moment, but um, if anybody would like a 14-day free trial, I just launched a little poll. So if you want to just fill that out and say, first question, if you'd like to um, sign up for the 14-day free trial, that first question is for you. If you'd like a one-to-one -one demonstration of the system, that second question is for you. Or indeed, if you'd like to, um, to, to take the benefit of the, uh, the fifth anniversary sale, then that third question is there for you too. Give me a moment to, um, to, to fill those out in case anybody would like to, to access that. I'll just answer a couple of Darren's points there. I know um, I'm conscious we can't get into maybe this, the site that you've mentioned there as well, but just picking up on some of your other points. I think in terms of the appeals, I mean, um, this is basically looking at um, greenbelt sites for residential development, um, given there's been a, a couple approved at, um, at appeal. Um, to be honest, I'm not getting that same level of feedback that I probably was when I was a developer in terms of you know um, stuff coming through at appeal, but I have seen good news around a, a site or two that sort of come out, and certainly councillors are under a lot more pressure to get um, to deliver housing, and therefore certainly ones in that sort of 
um, home county surrounding M25 and then, um, you know, they're having to really sort of look at their green belt. So I think there is potential, but it is a very much a high risk strategy. And I would absolutely work with a planning consultant um, who 100% believes in it um, and is willing to sort of back you all the way. And I think you would have to look at high affordable, you know, so I developed out a scheme um, just outside Oxford where we had 75% affordable, 25% housing. And that was on a green belt scheme and the council was supportive of that. So I think there are opportunities there to, to look at, but you, you need almost discussions with the council beforehand before starting to get into agreements with landowners and all of that kind of stuff, because it's you're just in a whole world of pain. If you've signed up to a, an agreement, you've paid a deposit or whatever, and now you're committed to uh, promoting the site and, you know, and then it turns out you haven't got much of a chance because the council aren't supportive, you know, so certainly want to have a look at. And then the other very quick point is set my boundaries. I know we're sort of working on that. It is on the roadmap. Um, so sort of watch this space. Like I say, we had a big update this week. We've got lots more coming over the course of this year. Um, and I can't remember exactly where it is on the map, but it, you know, it's, it's there on the roadmap to be, to be added in due course. So keep an eye out for that as well. So really, um, what remains for me is to say, firstly, thank you, Andrew, for, for your time today. Thank you for help, for your help and for, for driving for the most part of, um, of today. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thanks very much. And then, of course, thank you all to you all um, for watching and for your for engagement today. Um, I've been Paul Davis. We've been Nimbus Maps. We'll look forward to seeing you again soon. All the best. Bye for now.